Okay, everybody, welcome to those of you physically in the room and to everybody online. It's, I'm Cathy Holloway. I'm one of the co-founders and the and am I the academic director of the Global Disability Innovation Hub. Um, and it's my great pleasure today to introduce Professor Hema Chandra Kaur. Nearly right? Well, well, Not, yeah. Nearly right. Um, uh, who has joined us from the Indian Institute of Technology in Madras, where he is an associate professor in the Department of Humanities and Social Sciences. And I only returned from India last week. So this is like a continuation of my <laughs> of my India time. And um, so I'm going to hand over over to you now. And we look forward to hearing from you. Thank you very yeah, much. Thank you, Cathy. Uh, am I OK here? Yes, you're perfect. Oh, right. Good afternoon, everyone. Uh, I'm Hema Chandran. Uh, first of all, I'd like to thank uh, Professor Rao. Kathy and others for making this possible. Uh, today, I thought I will share some thoughts on uh, disability and disciplines. Curious interconnection. That's the name of name of the talk. Right. Where do we start? Um, well, uh, I'm just going to be a bit autobiographical about this. Kathy, maybe you can uh, alert about the timing when yes. uh, 30, 35 or something. Yeah, 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 that's great. So um, a bit autobiographical and then get into the heart of the problem about disability and disciplines and then see what to make of it. Right. First, uh, I'm going fast rewind to my school days uh, uh, back in Chennai. Um, we were, the, uh, I wrote a paper on this, but I thought uh, we can rehash, re Reset, uh, restated some of the ideas there and then take it from there. Yeah, so when I was in the school, uh, in a special school, uh, we were told many things uh, about the disciplines. That time we did not know these things are called disciplines like science, physics, math, literature, geography, and so on. We knew that they are called subjects. Uh, I know the English word subject is different, but we were called, uh, we were told that subjects and we did lessons, lesson in math and lesson in physics and oh, all in my mother tongue, which is Tamil. Uh, and then uh, we were told many things about it, such as the following. Well, keep away from sciences. That's not your cup of tea, uh, well, cup of milk, maybe. Yeah. And social science, okay. Uh, what did we understand about social science? Uh, for us, social science meant sociology or political science or anything that is not to do with poetry uh, or music. Humanities, yes, huge yes for all of us. Uh, do literature. You will become an English teacher, which is what I became uh, uh, at a university level. Uh, and then, uh, yeah, you will have total control over it and so on. Right. This is where our discussion about the curious connection between disability and disciplines start. Our journey together. Okay. So uh, our teachers told and and where did they learn these concepts? They learned uh, a, a, uh, my, now I now that I can look back autobiographically or social scientists would like to say auto ethnographically uh, that this is because they and we uh, we meaning children uh, blind children of my generation and after. We learn together what we learned from what we heard as was called blind psychology. What the hell is this? Well, it's a field of knowledge. It's both a field of knowledge and a cosmology. What is cosmology? Uh, 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 a collection of beliefs, if you like. Uh, a collection of beliefs and faiths and notions and metaphors, uh, discourses, all in some way informing your climate of opinion. 
And it's a field of knowledge. Yes, it is part of psychoanalysis, psychona psychology, behavioral psychology, and so on, uh, which talks a lot about what it is, what, what will happen to you if you're blind and if you're a blind child? What happens to you uh, if uh, you are playing, speaking, and uh, behaving, dressing, this and that? So all the pr pragmatic stuff. Ah, that takes us to an interesting idea, practical wisdom. So it's about the blind psychology as a cosmology and uh, a, a field of inquiry feels felt like uh, for children uh, like us, and uh, even today, like a, a, a collection of ideas concerning practical wisdom of uh, raising blind children, um, co connecting with blind people, and what they do in life and what they do for life, yeah? So that was blind psychology, and both our teachers and we, as children, our students in a special school, were indoctrinated, if you like, in that uh, system. And that system informed us, well, humanities, such as literature and so on, is great, uh, and you can jolly well go ahead and travel. Are there knowledge systems that, apart from blind psychology, that aided such a view? Yes, they did. The learned comfort that we had with the literature, uh, disciplines like literature, was also backed by the dis uh, discipline itself, such as English literature, which had curious experiments in the field. For example, uh, uh, an experiment of a kind instituted by I.A. Richards at Cambridge called practical criticism. Yeah? What is practical criticism? Well, you bring poems to the class or a piece of literature to the class, and you gather people around you, uh, students and teachers, work on the text together very objectively, practically, and mechanically, and most importantly, technically. Political contexts, yes, they can appear, but they are not integral to the inquiry that the teachers and students together. Right, that's called practical criticism and it's su su succession in the form of neocriticism, post-structuralism, deconstruction, everything, whatever the political radicalism uh, that kept coming into English as a discipline, still an an, a great emphasis on textual reading, close reading, interpretation, uh, still remain the heart of what we call English as a discipline. Well, I'm broad, uh, I'm making broad categories, sometimes reductive in character, but that's all right. Uh, so uh, uh, this is the this is what uh, English discipline was doing to itself and its myriad audience, disabled or non-disabled. Yeah, and uh, when this was uh, a climate, the uh, the local climate, as it were, that we occupied, that is blind psychology, also logged in into this bigger climate of such as English as a discipline. And curiously, both the climates, the bigger climate and the local climate of opinions, told us that, well, this is a grappling of the text. This is your grasp. Once you grasp a text, then it is in your mind, intercranially, into your body, into your system, into your language, into your command. Yeah? And therefore, it's most suitable for you. Right. The second, the social sciences, sociology, and so on. Ah, yeah, this was not, we were called, this is not your cup of milk. Uh, we were not allowed to have tea those days. That's true. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, um, and uh, we, we were told, yeah, uh, how will you do field work? Hey, Machandran, a teacher would chime in. Uh, this is not teacher blaming, okay? 
this is about climate of opinions. Um, teachers, uh, we all we are all teachers uh, uh, and students and so on. We 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 teach in the way we were. We pick up things as we go along. So there's nothing wrong with any particular teacher, right? So uh, we were told, how will you do field work? How will you collect data? Ah, how will you see people's faces for their reactions? Maybe they have a sweet voice and a bad face. What do you do with them? Yeah. So we were told, and then we got confused. Yeah. Uh, okay, I will not go for sociology. My friend, such as Ram Babu, he is no, no more. Um, in, in some way, it is a belated obituary for my dear friend. Uh, but I did not jump into the band, bandwagon. Uh, I did jump into the bandwagon of English, but he said, no, no, no. I'll do something revolutionary. I don't need to see the face. All I need is conversational environment. All I need is dynamism. All I need is uh, how, I how I relate to others. I will relate that way to sociology. What is the problem? And he went ahead, did a PhD and so on, and was a fantastic teacher. Uh, yeah, and sciences, yeah, I, I told you, keep away, because it is empirical. And uh, it, uh, we were not, we were told not only because sciences are empirical, because in Indian scheme of things, uh, ever since the first fire plan, uh, uh, post independence era, um, sciences, uh, uh, there was huge investment in science and technology uh, as fields of inquiry, as tangible things, the, uh, building dams and building computer science, building IITs, building other uh, bigger institutions of management and so on. And uh, uh, basically productive enterprise. And uh, it looks like inadvertently or uh, even uh, uh, by the climate of opinions around, uh, the state continue to believe, the state and other players continue to believe that some capacities are hard to build. Some human capabilities are hard to match this productive enterprise. And therefore, uh, disabled and others, uh, other marginalized uh, uh, from from other margins, uh, were behind this show of uh, technological might and uh, carry forward. So that climate of opinion and blind psychology led to the idea that whatever is empirical, that is non-verbal visual, that which requires the art of observation, that which require objectivity, that which require much more than, uh, well, touch narcissism, if you like, yeah, uh, will require a lot of work and therefore we were not uh, part of it. So therefore many of us kept away and some uh, managed to do but now, thanks to the affirmative actions of the state and things are moving on now, now uh, uh, lots of premier institutions back home and universities, not uh, so well known and are uh, not so well known uh, uh, and well known are catching up and uh, people with multiple disabilities are stepping into the boundaries of multiple disciplines. And hence our engagement with the idea of disability and disciplines. So um, uh, let me consolidate. One, the practical wisdom determined uh, our entry and non-entry into certain fields of knowledge. And this autoethnographic inquiry is extremely such autobiographical inquiries are extremely useful to log into that history so that uh, history does not repeat itself in, in a bad way. That's the first dynamic uh, that we like to consider together. And 
Then the second idea of curious interface between disability and disciplines. What the what that means? Well, uh, at the outset, discipl disciplines are not discrete entities, nor they are objective realities that reside in a cerebral space. They are embodied realities uh, that they all have material histories. They all have funding, yeah, without funding, nothing happens. Uh, they, they all have social approval, uh, social stigmatization, uh, state support. Uh, they also expand by popular embrace or popular rejection. Hmm? All these things happen. Now, uh, uh, now, what is the connection between disability and disciplines? One is the pragmatic view uh, or practical wisdom, phrenesis, as they say in academic English, uh, yeah, which has uh, classical uh, language roots. Mm -hmm. uh, that's not, it's not required that we get into the roots of the problem, uh, roots of the uh, word phrenesis or practical wisdom, but see how it operates. Uh, that's more important at this stage. Yeah. So uh, disability and disciplines. Well, all disabilities assume uh, some capabilities. They also assume uh, some uh, some notion of uh, rationality, logic, and some notion of community. For example, uh, a, in an engineering lab, uh, there is, uh, one would assume, uh, a lab community to be different from the community that would constitute, uh, say, uh, uh, working on paper and pen, uh, abstract algebraic problem. Uh, 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 and in English as a discipline would constitute, would imagine community to be its community, to be made up of teachers, students, artists, critics, theorists, uh, publishers, consumers, um, and uh, Lay readers, mind you, they uh, all disciplines have uh, uh, lay or non-lay specialist or non-specialist audience in mind. So they have this the idea of community and their orientation and their capacities and capabilities too. So this is where disability and disciplines they come uh, into contact. Uh, if I'm blind, then uh, as my teachers uh, and my community of uh, special education uh, specialists and uh, my fellow blind children assume, uh, my discipline in English also assume that, well, if I, uh, this is a, a, a member of the discipline, uh, a visually impaired member, if you give him or her, some technology, say screen reader, that would automatically empower him or her to get into uh, disciplinary conversations as a teacher and a student. I'm afraid that's far from true. We need much more, uh, much more insight into how people learned during their formative years. In my formative years, I learned through uh, cassette recorders. Many of you young people may see it in museum now. Yeah. So uh, 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 cassette players and uh, many of my uh, neighbors, parents and others uh, read for me. Uh, they used to record 
and give it in cassettes. And then uh, I had Braille. Yes, I'm an avid Braille reader. I can read English and Tamil. Now that I'm learning music, I can learn. I, I read uh, music Braille. Uh, most people do not know this fact. Uh, Louis Braille in, invented music Braille before inventing literary Braille. Uh, he wanted to invent some improvised system for himself to catch up on piano, piano lessons, actually. Yeah. Right. So uh, what am I saying? Uh, every uh, disability, such as blindness, deafness, autism, and uh, hundreds of other conditions, people come with, with interesting literacy backgrounds. And how they became that disciplinary subject, that depends on how much uh, uh, what kinds of literacy? It, it uh, my in my situation, literacy, uh, formative literacy involved friendship with people, interdependence with people for reading, novels animated for me, history books animated for me through voices, uh, voices of people, uh, young and old, my contemporaries, girls and boys and so on. Uh, it animated through Braille supplementary material. It animated through anxieties, depressive episodes. Uh, it, uh, it also came with anger, sometimes not being able to read what I want to read. It also uh, animated through uh, attachment relationships. Uh, some voices came along, some voices depleted, uh, along my journey, some voices uh, became ideal for reading a piece of poetry so much that uh, uh, I reject certain voices in favor of others and so on. And then came screen reading. Uh, and then then came uh, voice dictation softwares, uh, braille displays, uh, all which involved different literacies, different communities I engage with. Different, uh, different philosophies of assistive technology uh, and philosophies of friendships, interdependence, and so on. Oh, so much involved in a person's engagement or introduction to a discipline. That's the point. And if that were the point, then uh, English as a discipline will have to assume, uh, will have to revise its paradigm, will, revi will have to revise its thinking about the relationship between text and the reader, the relationship between text in the class and the interpretive community uh, or the community of readers and people and so on, which is part of the lit literature as a discipline. So um, yeah, uh, in that sense, one may have to ask, uh, for example, is there an accessible text in the class? Uh, for those who are English folks may recall what I'm saying, Stanley Fisher's famous statement, is there a text in this class? It needs to be rethought. Time to re th rethink about literacy and literacy histories seriously, if we have to make anything about the curious intersect, interconnection between disabilities and disciplines. Right, let's march ahead. Um, so uh, think, thinking about the larger picture, what is the larger picture about this uh, disability and disciplines interconnection? Well, uh, all disabilities, uh, people with disabilities come with uh, challenges, opportunities, uh, uh, textual uh, radicalism, if you like, uh, and they come with unique life histories, uh, experiences to bear upon the discipline. But disciplines are not yet fully geared to think about them. So it's, if you like, uh, using an interesting Tamil word, one-way traffic. 
uh, saying one way traffic because we use it. Uh, uh, disciplines don't respond, but disabled people want disciplines to respond. Now we we should make that a symbiotic two way traffic. Yeah. So uh, we have we can think how humanities, uh, which consists of different disciplines, social sciences, and STEM, and others, how they become self-reflexive about these things. And self-reflexivity can emerge from within and outside too, because there are lots of people working on assistive technology, uh, rehabilitation, special education, uh, people working on disciplinary inclusion, about uh, including people from the margins, like racial minorities, religious minorities, caste minorities, and so on. All those conversations are certainly helpful. Now, the third component of my talk. So I walked you through my special autobiographical history to talk about why I'm interested in this topic, disability and disciplines, what prompted me to get there, get here. Second, uh, uh, the problem itself, disability and disciplines. And third, how life writing or life history is useful as a framework for all of us, uh, whether we are a friend of a disabled ally, companion, uh, uh, disciplinarian, yeah, scientists, technologists, assistive technology specialists, and artists, and so on. Whatever is our uh, persuasion, it's good to have life writing or life history. I'm using them as synonyms to uh, to go back into life histories and see how things can work and things do not work. And then come up with, uh, if you like, out of the box solution to to bear upon the curious inter interconnection between disability and disciplines. Okay, what's life writing or life history? Broadly speaking, very broadly, life writing is all about speaking about oneself. That's it. Uh, well, so uh, if that were the case. What are its forms? Well, so many, so many. Uh, the the forms are proliferating by the day. Uh, and it, it's hard to catch up with it, actually. And it's also intergenerational. Uh, the students whom I teach have a much more dip into digital forms of life writing, such as tweet, Instagram posts, Facebook posts, uh, WhatsApp messages. Uh, I'm naming what I know, okay, uh, vaguely familiar. But there, there are many other things, memes and so on. But broadly, uh, any form of human expression, self-expression, such as diary, letters, uh, graffiti, uh, um, if you like, rant, uh, uh, angry post on, on the web, uh, uh, maybe scrapbooks. Uh, illness narratives, uh, oh, uh, they call it autopathography, uh, forget about the technical words. Uh, 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 and uh, yeah, I mean, uh, testimonials, witness narratives, uh, and the thing can be endless. And with the arrival of new media, such as the digital, new forms of self-expression. Uh, can proliferate. And classical forms of self-expression, such as involving bhakti or devotion, uh, uh, apologia, confession, uh, <clears throat> and uh, uh, self-talk. Uh, uh, Freud called it talking cure, uh, narratives of healing. So many out there. And these are uh, some of the forms that forms of life writing that I can recall aloud uh, in your presence. Okay, what can life writing 
in what way life writing or life histories uh, can promote our cause of disability and disciplines interface. Uh, somebody may point a finger at me saying, hey, you are idealizing life writing. It can have fictional elements. Yes, why not? If I have to represent the best of myself in the interview, job interview, I'm going to fictionalize something. I'm going to turn the interview in my favor by weaving an interesting piece of fiction out on the fact of my life. Fiction and non-fiction, they will have to go together in curious ways. And fiction is human uh, creation. Fiction, fantasy, uh, daydreaming, yeah, slippage into delusion, uh, hallucination, uh, 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 ego trip. It's all fact of life. And that fact of life is embedded in life history. Yeah. So why should we get into life history? Because one way to get into, get the engine going, disability and disciplines engine going, is to log into people's own knowledge and their view of what happened to them. Why things did not happen. If I have to choose math for the first time in India, road not taken phenomenon, Robert Frost, then I will face dilemmas. I will face uh, I may be beaten up. I mean, not literally. Oh, that can happen too, but in many symbolic ways. I can be stunted all my career. Remain stunted. That's what I meant. Uh, so, uh, if we manage to hear these stories out, document them, and come up with innovative ways of connecting with them, then we have uh, new solutions coming out. Um, it, it's not as though I'm a specialist and I have read everything about practical wisdom, Frenna says, then I'll come up with a solution. No, that's not going to happen. Frenna have to come from people who ex have gone through it and uh, they have been hearing, they have been fine-tuning what they have been hearing, and they have rejected what they have been hearing, and they have taken on board what they have been hearing, that kind of thing. So once we have that on board, then it's possible to come up with technology, good politics, good interpretive community, and a facility with platforms that make any discipline possible in the first place. So that's uh, that's first use, uh, uh, practical use. The second is, uh, if you like, I like to use this phrase from Thomas Kauser, uh, counter diagnosis. Ah, what the hell is that? Uh, diagnosis is well, uh, doctor keeps a thermometer here. Uh, ah, you have Hema, you have one hundred and two. Uh, you, uh, I'm going to prescribe a pill so that it goes down to normal. So that's diagnosis. Counter diagnosis is when uh, I'm not going to say, hey, doctor, you have some fever. I'm going to give you a fever. That's not counter diagnosis. Counter diagnosis is about saying, well, giving me a pill is not enough. Hear me out. How did I experience this fever? Why this fever is coming back and forth? And what is happening to myself because of this consistent fever? So before the doctor, writes down a prescription, the counter-diagnosis will involve me talking about how to talk to a patient, how I am uh, capable of hear, uh, I, how I am worthy of being heard out. That's the kind of thing. Counter-diagnosis is a kind of diagnosis that will have to emerge so that we keep pushing the boundaries of any field, such as medicine uh, and many other fields. 
So life histories can come handy for that. And, uh, and third uh, and the most important thing is the community. How on earth we can achieve a community around? Do we have time, some more time, Cathy? We have some time, yeah. we've got about seven more minutes. Okay, 10 more minutes. Seven. Seven, seven. okay, I'll be, I'll be try, I'll try to be lining up. So uh, anyway, we are there. Uh, uh, we, uh, as our logging into, plugging into disciplines, we can do as individuals and as community. And the transition from individuality and the community connect always does not happen automatically. Now, uh, definitely not automatically. We have to uh, push it. For example, if I learn a piece of poetry, say, Thiruvalluvar, or Shakespeare, or Blake, what do we make of them? Uh, how do we uh, achieve uh, a gender consciousness or uh, identity consciousness or technical mastery of these poets uh, uh, as a community? Well, I need uh, the community in my class. The community could be my classmates how they understand my access requirements, how they understand my access histories, how the teacher understand access histories of different people so that our disciplines become more amenable to more conversations and more technical, technically astute reading. Yeah. So in, in other ways, uh, all disciplines will involve some poetics of some kind. Poetics is a fashionable word for saying, well, uh, this is the shape of my discipline. So uh, uh, if we don't involve life histories of people from the margins, such as people with a disability, then we will have poetics that will only talk to privileged individuals and not community engagement. So that's uh, from individual, individualized poetics to collaborative poetics. That's possible only if we have life histories on both. Life histories in all its myriad shapes and limitations, I would say. And uh, lastly, I mean, uh, this is, uh, I thought, uh, very important. Uh, transformative politics. Uh, we are not talking about uh, reforms, disability and disciplines intersection, because we are only interested in improving the climate of opinion about disability. If we improve one uh, segment of our community, such as classroom, very well, uh, and if we put in place many things, uh, it can become transformative for many other entities, identities as well. Well, social model of disability is a classic example, but social model of disability can have its challenges because uh, uh, if we put austerity measures in place, uh, uh, well, that's catching up in all parts of the globe, I'm afraid, uh, that can seriously challenge the the reason of being and uh, the heart of the problem the social model uh, is espousing about. For those who are not in the disability sector, uh, social model of disability is based on the idea that it is the organization around you, it is the institutional dynamics around you that make impairment uh, appear more challenging than the impairment itself. That's the crux of the uh, social model philosophy. Right, winding up now. Uh, basically, uh, I wanted to plead for the following. One, uh, uh, let's uh, let's not take the the interconnections between disabilities and disciplines very lightly. Uh, it involves complex interconnection that may involve. Uh, many things, among many things, life histories of people with disability. And second, let's integrate life histories 
into all uh, forms of emancipatory and transformative enterprises, uh, such as the fields such as assistive technology, uh, fields such as literary criticism, fields such as uh, uh, you know uh, 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 psychology, and so on. And lastly, uh, uh, let's begin talking about uh, how we uh, uh, in uh, across the societies and cultures how we work as individuals and communities. And the transformation is not automatic and easy. Thank you. Thank you so much. I'm trying to get out of this stand angle that I'm yeah. <laughs> I'm not often a student, so I couldn't figure out how to lift the table. So um, I'll, firstly, I'll turn to, I think there might be, be a thing in the chat, but does anybody got questions that they'd like to ask here in the room anything at all no in which case I'll, I'll maybe ask you how long have you been conceptualizing this idea of disability and disciplines and and following on from that within your work at IIT Madras how does it inform your research or, or your teaching practices there that's a great question uh Cathy uh, actually uh in IIT Madras we have uh, formed an enabling unit. Uh, it has been there a uh, couple of years. Um, uh, as I said, for a long time, uh, people, students with disabilities, uh, did not make it to premier institutions uh, like IIT. Uh, now, because of affirmative actions of the state, uh, reservation policy, and other forms of affirmative action, uh, students with different conditions are in the rise. Uh, so that's a very uh, wonderful development. So that also means uh, uh, entry is not enough. Now disciplines have to catch up. Uh, there are students with autism, have visual impairment. In visual impairment, it's a big spectrum, uh, low vision, total blindness and others, uh, and other forms of uh, hearing impairment and others have come. Well, uh, one is to get on board time-tested practices uh, from the Western world and others, such as sign language interpretation, yeah, uh, braille display, screen readers, and uh, scribes, uh, and so on. And uh, one cannot ignore them. They are very, very important. And uh, innovating locally and universally, both are important. And things are, uh, so we induct these things on board. Uh, and uh, 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 to varying degrees of success. Uh, I'm saying varying degrees of success because Ultimately, any technology or any teaching orientation, students are the boss, uh, like in the consumer world, consumers are the boss uh, in the retail world. So they will decide whether they need a particular technology or a way to teach and so on. If they find it boring, they move away, uh, if not physically, by way of thinking and attitude. So some don't embrace screen readers because they feel that they can manage with uh, rem uh, residual vision and they don't want to call themselves disabled people. Yeah, so uh, they may not say this public in public, but in private, they may uh, 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 make these uh, maneuvers and suggestions. Uh, besides, uh, with my own condition, uh, visual impairment, uh, I enter the class and there are many things happening uh, between me and my students. Uh, uh, I'm notorious for by hearting my students' names and call their names and ask, hey, um, uh, Ram, what do you think about this? That kind of thing. Uh, so uh, that also comes with uh, what Mia Mingus calls access intimacy. 
uh, with my students, which is great, uh, 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 surrounded by my students and so on. It's, uh, it's a great thing to happen. Uh, so uh, their expectations and my expectations, and they read out manuscripts, and I give mark. I not only give marks, I say, why I'm giving you this mark? Uh, 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 90 and not 95, 70 and not 90. That kind of uh, walking them through the teacher's mind, as it were. So uh, uh, to come uh, answer your question straight, um, Kathy, uh, because the influx is happening, entry into many disciplines is happening. It is also important now to think how much ready are disciplines themselves? And if not ready, how to make them ready? That is my curiosity. Uh, many things, I've just voiced them here. Uh, I may not have clear answers for everything. Yeah, does that make sense? Ken? It makes sense, it makes sense. There's, um, I know that the Bartlett School of Architecture in, in UCL, they have been exploring doing a specific course. I think it's Alan Bell has been, Penn has been leading it. He um, has been looking at a specific course for uh, blind people, people with severe vi visual impairment. I don't think it has to be total blindness, but severe visual impairments to be architects uh -huh. because their ability to understand how sound will, will work is much better or more enhanced than people um, without, with, with vision, because people with vision tend to design predominantly with uh -huh. the visual sense, uh -huh. <laughs> no matter how hard you try uh -huh. and help people to not yeah. do that, they tend yeah. to do that. Yeah. So the people who are going to design best non-visually are going to be the people without a visual sense. Yeah. And yeah. so, and then for you'll get these buildings that will not just look beautiful, but but sound will, it, they will sound beautiful and they, they will, they be acoustically um, excellent. So um, I haven't followed up with him in, in a while, but I think there are um, also sort of maybe I put to you that there's sure. possible um, no opportunities for disability and disciplines as well to yeah, to expand yeah. the the disciplines as well as come up to speed to make sure everybody can be included. What Wonderful, yeah, yeah. I am working on music accessibility now. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, what AI can learn from uh, music pedagogy among people with different capabilities, such as visual impairment uh, so that uh, there's the curious ways to push the boundaries i think there are um i think anna's got a question and then louise anna yeah um, hi anna hi hi i can repeat it okay yeah go on. yeah i have a question about how you view concepts like deaf gain and gaining blindness, ideas that uh, disabled people have certain advantages in certain spheres, like Kathy mentioned, with perhaps people with very low vision having a, a particular um, contribution to architecture, yeah. and how you view that in terms of going into different disciplines, because I think it can be a bit fraught, and you see like certain companies trying to recruit, say, autistic people, thinking they're more productive in certain ways and that leading to exploitation. So I'm curious about how you view that in academia and wow. just, just for the Just for the people online, I'm just gonna try and paraphrase that, Anna. So don't, yeah. don't, don't yeah. kill my butchering of your question. <laughs> but um, but I'll, I think the, the main purpose of the question is to look at, at where if you do begin to push that boundary, so like deaf positivity or autism positive, what point does that maybe cross over into exploitation? And, and how, does, how does that tension sit within academia? Wow, this is very challenging. Uh, I have to think aloud. Think aloud. I'm afraid. Uh, <laughs> okay, let's let's put it this way. Uh, all this deaf gain, blind blindness gain, and so on. Uh, I think they're mostly about the idea of self affirmation. Uh, in a world uh, uh, where there's marginalization, stigmatization, uh, we have to think and perform about self-affirmation. What is the usefulness of, what is a great deal about my sign language? What, in what way I become a better critic of touch? Uh, Kathy was talking about acoustics, acoustomology. In what way my life experiences have most valuable things to say about acoustic environments 
instead of saying, oh, well, I cannot see, and therefore I have to sit in the corner. So uh, it's mostly self-affirmation, and that self-affirmation may be in the form of individual emancipation and community cohesion and emancipation and uh, 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 new form of politics, sensory politics, and so on. It's very, very useful thing. Uh, how that plays out in academia? Um, I think it, uh, most of it, it is, a, a, in my experience, experience is underrated. Uh, it's one thing to write uh, very sound disability studies uh, scholarship theory, and it's very useful. Uh, don't get me wrong. Uh, put, pushing the boundaries of scholarship, creating new vocabulary, uh, rewriting histories, uh, rewriting the disciplinary, redrawing disciplinary boundaries. All these things are the great value of disability studies across the globe. So, which is very nice actually, but uh, 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 disciplines at their heart core. Uh, at the center can still remain unmoved. For example, uh, if my student uh, feels wonderful about her conditions, cap capacity to bring new friendships, new social relationships, new forms of interpreting emotions such as anger, if she's feeling great about that, uh, my, my discipline if had has not yet opened up spaces for inducting that knowledge into the field, um, uh, that's it's not yet there. I am afraid. Uh, I think that's still the case with most disciplines. Uh, uh, but more and more people appear. Uh, uh, as I said, uh, uh, for example, back home in my own institution. Uh, students with disabilities have started appearing. That means they, they will demand more and more from their disciplines. More visibility, more entry, more are the chances for this discipline to learn about games and and uh, making use of them. What do you think, Anna? Did, did I answer you properly? Okay. Thank yeah. you. Yeah. <laughs> Louise, do you have a question? I have eight questions. Oh, eight I... questions. <laughs> right, go. Yeah. Do you want a yeah. microphone? Uh, yeah, why not? Might, might be better. Yeah. I would run it up to you, but yeah. back it's upstairs, but yeah. not be good. <laughs> I like the idea of eight questions. Eight. In oh. fact, I can just quickly pull them up oh, right, here yeah. we go. on stage. Yeah. So there's a couple of questions that have come through um, that are quite similar. So maybe one of the main ones to answer is just um, what programs are in place to change the mindset of communities to allow children with different abilities mm -hmm. to take up um, disciplines of their choice? Mm -hmm. And that's it's quite similar to other questions that have come in around how can teachers and parents and um, uh, sorry, teachers and parents of persons with disabilities ensure inclusive in educational environments for all. Mm -hmm. um, so couple of questions combined okay uh, uh let me take two at a time is it is it, is it fine yeah so uh uh yeah ha how do we improve uh community how do we do community engagement uh especially when uh, uh for disabled children say uh w one of the things that we can peruse uh, i think which is still which is happening uh, uh is popularizing missions of the discipline, like popular science books. Uh, popular science books are really good uh, because uh, they expand the base of the field in question. For example, uh, what is quantum physics? Uh, then you have to, you should not shut up a child saying, oh, quantum physics is for grown up. And uh, you cannot imagine if first study your lessons. That approach, uh, and, uh, that's very notorious uh, uh, attitude, uh, which is very popular. So popular science books, translating them to Braille, uh, multi-sensory touch format uh, from visual impairment perspective, popular science books in uh, sign language. Uh, uh, why I'm hopping on popular science, popular history, popular economics, and 
just plain speak discipline huh? without self indulgence into uh, technical vocabulary uh, this is where literacy uh, histories are very important actually uh, it's easy for myself uh, i i would like to emphasize again it's very easy for myself to hide myself into uh, technical abstruse technically abstruse vocabulary and uh, demonstrate that i am great i know this technical vocabulary uh, but it's profoundly difficult to speak in plain english or plain tamil and say this is what i know uh, i think that attitude will come a long way in getting disabled children on board this is behind communi uh, uh, community efforts like com cbr community based rehabilitation in india and this is uh, behind uh, this is beyond or also beyond um, assistive technologies uh, trying to get a sense of how uh, professor rao's uh, a braille laptop and mobility cane uh, ultrasound cane uh, i know it involved thousands of people uh, uh, and back home in campus professor sujata involved yeah i'm i'm just uh, giving names because just uh, i know this names very uh, intimately yeah uh, so these are the ways to get around the problem and the second question was um had gone um i'm working on these things um, so, i think you can actually answer that one okay um, if you've got a couple of minutes i might just throw one last one at you for the <laughs> final audience that's okay <laughs> yeah why not yeah. i was going to say i'll make it an easy one but i probably won't um <laughs> so someone's asked about the importance of interdisciplinary collaboration to address the needs of disabled students and they've asked if you've got if any successful collaboration or initiative um within academic departments uh, and what were the key factors then? <laughs> Very topical, then. Um, uh, collaboration between uh, disciplines can be notorious, uh, with one discipline saying, well, uh, I know things under the hood. You can only bring aesthetics uh, or, uh, or, or nicety cream or on the cake as it were uh, uh but the other way of interdisciplinary collaboration is to learn from each expertise because uh, uh, remember life history is not unique to english as a discipline like all disciplines have life histories uh for example an assistive technologist from their past uh, field work will have a lot to share why not so i think if we have uh, if we have a sense of respect for each, uh, each other's disciplines and if we uh, uh, which still exist exemplary models do exist i i think that's a way to go about successful yeah there are many many actually of the kind that i was talking about braille laptop ultrasound well, look at the disciplines involved ultrasound uh, mobility cane it involves uh, sonic uh, technology engineering uh, acoustics it involves ergonomics it involves uh, sociology because you consider various demographies uh, like like gender uh, people from various terrains hilly, hills uh, landscapes uh, rough roads uh, towns do not have roads at all yeah uh, it in, it involves ages different ages uh, like children elderly uh, middle age and so on uh, it also involves uh, uh, history life history but if we have to design ultrasound mobility cane we also need to know what mobility how mobility cane evolved in the first place uh, how what is its history uh, what is the how different materials have aided or obstructed mobility right from aluminum to fiber and so on so so many disciplines mm, involved and these are successful one of the successful projects yeah i think that's it thank you 
So I think that we haven't got time to answer all of the other questions, but I'm sure Louise can pass them on to you in case there's anything in particular you oh, want to get definitely, back. Definitely, definitely. Um, and you can you can reply to people uh, after the event. Um, but we just put our hands together to to thank you again um, for a wonderful talk. Thank you. Thank you. And thank you for travelling from India to here <laughs> to talk to us. So yeah, thank, um, thank you to everyone who joined online. We look forward to seeing you again at our next session. Um, and with that, I'll I'll just close. Thank you, Kathy. Thank you, everyone. Bye-bye. Thank okay. you.